silver manipulation, gold manipulation, platinum manipulation. Is it real? Are the prices of precious metals controlled, tamped down? We're going to get to the bottom of it today in this video. And more importantly, talking about the price of metals getting tamped down, guys, this week we've got big, big news. It's going to affect the price of gold. It will affect the price of silver. It'll affect the price of platinum, easy for me to say, as well. That'll be the big inflation numbers, the big numbers, or will they be small numbers that we get this week. We're going to dive into that as well. Thank you for being here. Please, I put out a new piece of content every day about precious metals. Valuable, entertaining, I'd like to think. I hope you think. If you do, please subscribe to the channel. Giving this video a thumbs up also helps get the word out to other people like you who value silver, who value gold. Let's dive right into this idea that silver is manipulated. You know, and let me start with this. This very morning, we saw a 40 cent decrease, nearly 2% decrease from high to low in the price of silver. Really? Really? How did that happen? And it happened in about a 10 minute segment. Here's what's so interesting about this, guys. When we talk about the price of silver, and we're going to zoom in on that, being manipulated during that 10, 15 minute period this morning, when silver dropped by 40 cents per share, nearly 2%. How much silver was traded, right? That's what we need to think about. Now, look, I don't have access to that data, so I don't know. But I've heard many other times when people talk about these waterfall decreases in the price of silver, in the price of gold, in the price of platinum as well, oftentimes during that little 10 or 15 minute period where the price just goes straight down. I mean, it doesn't go down like this. It's a waterfall, straight down. Oftentimes, during those periods, we're having volumes of metal traded, like the amount of silver, contract, electronic, silver, unicorn fart dust, whatever you want to call it, it's equal to like 10, 15, sometimes even 20 or higher percent of the entire annual mine output. So is the price manipulated? I would have to say yes, right? If in 10 minutes they can knock 2%, 3%, 4% off gold, silver, platinum, but they do it at a volume level that's equal to, when you talk about the real McCoy, the real metal, it's equal to like 10, 15, 20% of the annual mine output. It's crazy. I know with silver, I've heard Keith Newmeyer, correct me if I'm wrong, right? You know, but Keith Newmeyer has said that on most days, there's a, an equal amount of electronic silver futures contracts traded that oftentimes equals the entire annual output of the entire mining sector. Does that make sense? Does that open the door for manipulation? I don't know, but is there more proof? Do we have more proof? Let's get in our time machines and go back to 2020, right? Here, I printed this out for you, even though my printer broke halfway through it. You ever have one of those mornings? The printer jams up, the dryer's not lighting. You know, we all deal with crap, right? I'm not the only one. <laughs> but I was able to print this out to you. An article from Reuters. Okay, Reuters says right there, Reuters, as we like to call them. Reuters says, this is from September of 2020, but we need to remember this. J.P. Morgan, <clears throat> excuse me, to pay $920 million for manipulating precious metals. Now, I'm going to teach you something super interesting, right? Because we can read that headline. J.P. Morgan Chase has agreed to pay more than $920 million. Admitted to wrongdoing. They admitted to it. To settle, and it gets even better with J.P. Morgan. I got more info for you in a little bit. But they settled a federal U.S. market manipulation probe case into its trading of metals futures, right? Like we just talked about. In 10 minutes, they can trade what's equal to 20% of the annual mine output and push the price down. 
Uh, ba, 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 the landmark mo- there's a landmark settlement. J.P. Morgan paid 436 million in fines, 311 million in restitution, and more than 172 million in disgorgement. Whatever that means. Between 2008 and 2016, J.P. Morgan engaged in a pattern of manipulation in the precious metals futures and U.S. Treasury futures market. The CFTC said. So is J- does J.P. Morgan, do the big banks... Mani- now, th- here's the deal. That's a drop in the bucket. You've heard that before, but let's remember. They admitted they were they were uh, convicted of doing this, right? And we had that last year, that traitor's case, that they were convicted, and they paid a big fine. And guess what? It's nothing to them. And we're going to touch on that here in a little bit. But what I want to teach you about, this is interesting. So we hear that. Oh, Silver's manipulated. Gold is manipulated. How do they do it? Look, guys, it's not that complicated. I have a very easy way for you to understand it. They do it through spoofing. Spoofing, right? You don't hear that word that often. You got spoofed. You got fooled. Has anyone ever spoofed you? Maybe an ex-girlfriend or boyfriend or, you know, whoever, right? Car dealership, right? You got fooled. You got spoofed. Here's how it works. Let's say J.P. Morgan or one of the other banks, of course, J.P. Morgan doesn't do this anymore, but one of the other banks wants to buy gold and they want to get it as cheap as they can. Spoofing is very simple. What they would do is they want to buy gold and they want to buy it at a lower price. They want the price to go down. They put in a boatload of imaginary fake orders on the other side to sell, right? At higher prices than where the market is right now, but they'll put in just a ton of orders to sell. So the people that really do want to sell, that are holding out for the best price, they see all these new sell orders come in and they freak out. They're like, we better sell now. Look, everybody's selling. Everybody's selling gold. So they sell at a lower price. And then as it goes down, more people, it cascades. It's called spoofing. If you didn't grasp that, let me make it even more simple for you. Let's say you live on a street with 20 houses, a little micro neighborhood, right? And your wife or your husband, whatever it may be, says, honey, we need to move. I'm tired. We, for some reason, you have to move. So the market value of your house is about, let's say, $300,000. You put your house up for sale for $300,000. A couple weeks goes by. Some guy named J.P. Morgenthal decides he wants to buy your house. But he wants to get it for the lowest price possible. Just like when they want to buy gold. But this J.P. Morgenthal guy, no relation to J.P. Morgan, he wants to buy your house. And there's not a bunch of people, you know, you're not getting a lot of activity. But you don't know that he wants to buy your house. He came in, he looked around, he acted, eh, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So what he does is in the middle of the night, he goes and gets a bunch of real estate for sale signs and he sticks them in about three quarters of your neighbor's yards, right? Fake sell orders, just like they do on the electronic exchanges. You wake up, your wife wakes up and she goes out to get the paper. Who gets a paper anymore? But you know what I'm saying. She goes out to get the mail or take the dog out to go pee and poop, whatever. And she looks around and she's like, oh my God, everybody on our street is selling. We better not hold out for 300. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. And a couple hours later, you get a call from your realtor saying, hey, I've got a buyer for your house, but they only want to pay $270,000. And you think, you know what? Everybody's selling. Everybody's selling. I better take that while I can and get out of here. That's spoofing. I hope that makes sense. I hope that uh, helps understand, helps you understand how that goes on. It's illegal, right? Right. Now, furthermore, let's just touch on J.P. Morgan a little bit more because they're, you know, they're good guys. They're honest. Those J.P. Morgan guys, they are the best. Jamie Dimon, he's the beacon of responsibility and honesty and ethics. We know that. Just, just go check out their website. They keep, they keep the, the their investors and the American public at top, right? Yeah, sure, sure they do. Here, here's an article. Here's another one from my broken printer about J.P. Morgan. This is astounding when you realize this. J.P. Morgan Chase has paid $38,995,000,000 in 
Yeah, I got that right. In fines for banking, securities, and additional violations as new SEC enforcement action kicks in. Let me read this to you, all right? $39 billion in fines J.P. Morgan's paid. But they're our top bank. They're, you know, they... Again, this was all, I'm sure, all accidental things they did, right? J.P. Morgan Chase is approaching $39 billion mark in total fines imposed by U.S. regulators, enforcement agencies, and lawsuits related to anti-competitive practices, securities abuses, and other violations. A recent $4 million fine, you know, to J.P. Morgan or J.P. Morgenthau, that's like a nickel in their pocket, nonetheless, was issued by the SEC against the banking giant will bring the amount of J.P. Morgan's fines to that number that I said earlier. This, by the way, oh, J.P. Morgan, this is funny. Oh, by the way, J.P. Morgan did not issue a public comment in response to the SEC's enforcement action. They just, they don't comment, right? No, no. Just go check out their website. They are ethical and honest. That's their core values, right? They have core values, a mission statement, right? They want to take care of you. Yeah, they want to take care of you, all right which stated that the firm deleted 47 million emails that were required to be properly maintained and accessible to regulators. Oh, they accidentally deleted 47 million emails. By the way, thank you for being here. Please give this a thumbs up. I ring the bell when we get to 100 thumbs up. Hey, I will put out a new piece of content every day. Please subscribe to the channel. That really helps out as well. Unbelievable. The SEC says at least a dozen ongoing, okay, <laughs> ongoing securities investigations have requested documents from the firm that are no longer accessible. Oh, boy. They're getting investigated, and they happen to lose the evidence that the SEC needed to investigate them. These are the guys that control the price of precious metals for now. Do you think it's going to go on forever? Do you think, right? Do you think it will go on forever and ever? Look, this is not a show about the BRICS. This is not a show about Russia, China, Brazil, India, South Africa, Saudi Arabia, and there's 41 other countries that are either joining them. Those countries they're fed up. And part of what they're fed up with, too, is the manipulation of the metals markets. They've explicitly said that. So we aren't alone, us precious metals enthusiasts. And that's what we are, precious metals enthusiasts. You can't manipulate. You can't, you can't uh, uh, pervert a market forever. It doesn't go on forever, guys. You can't uh, fight Mother Nature indefinitely eventually the truth comes out like in the wizard of oz right and the wizard of oz has a lot of uh symbolism that directly relates to silver and gold at the end right the the oz was revealed he was just some 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 ordinary guy who was pulling a big facade a monetary mirage and we talk about that all the time what's the fed doing what is this fiat paper, electronic, unicorn fart dust, as we like to refer to it from time to time, system created. It's created a monetary mirage. There's only one, well, two things, three things, Neil, because you're here. As always, thank you, Neil, for helping out, okay? I appreciate it. Everybody, please tell Neil thank you, okay? But there's only three or four things that are real money, real money. Everything else is a mirage, right? That would be gold, silver, and we're going to throw platinum in there as well, because we love platinum also. So the mirage, who knows how much longer it can continue. But I'm telling you, when you got 70% of the world's population moving to a system that'll be backed by real money, real metals, there is a change afoot like we've never seen before. That's why we have, <clears throat> excuse me, our heads out of the sand. We're paying attention. It's not always fun to have your head out of the sand, right? We want to bury ourselves from time to time. But the reality is we're awake. We are paying attention. <clears throat> Dean R says we live in a corrupt world. Hello, Susie. 
Hey, Susie, we'll ring the bell for you. Steve LaPointe, a lot of hype on YouTube that 600 silver, now, 600 silver is coming. Problem is, I've been hearing that since 2010. Yes, Steve, I get a lot of flack. I'll say $85 silver, like Smitty the Silver Bear right there, right? Because there's too much of this unicorn fart dust out there, okay? Right? Some people I know think Bix Weir. I've heard a lot of people talk about 600. I've heard Keith Newmeyer, the CEO of First Majestic Silver, right? The crown prince of silver, as I like to refer to him. He talks about triple digit silver. Look, I'll go out on a limb. I think we could have $6,000 silver. I know. And I'm not saying next week, next month. It could could happen. It could, right? I think, though, definitely during my, my daughter's lifetime, they're 11 years old, we'll see $6,000 silver. Absolutely, right? We might see 60. We might see 6 million. Go talk to somebody. I have some friends that lived in Venezuela. Talk to people from Venezuela about the value of precious metals, about what happens when a currency collapses. Now, look, there's a big difference between the Venezuelan currency and the U.S. dollar. No doubt about it, right? But the general fundamental factors remain the same. No fiat currency has ever lasted, right? Maybe we're in a new era. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't have a crystal ball. Only Buddy Rumble, the Louisiana gold guru, has a crystal ball. And by the way, I'll be talking to his mom, Bell Star Rumble, this week, who's a long-term stacker. She knows silver and gold, and she's a very entertaining lady. If you have any questions you want me to ask Bell Star Rumble, okay, about her stacking experience and her thoughts on silver and gold, send me an email at ronsbasementsilver at gmail.com. I'd be happy to talk to her. I'm really excited about talking to Bell Star Rumble. Interesting. Guys, we've been talking a lot, a lot about silver and solar, okay? Yes, I'll be quick. You know, I got an article here from... Um, uh, about from from uh, uh, the FX Street about a report from ANZ, the biggest bank. Okay, they're talking about the fact that uh, solar demand for silver by 2025 could eat up 53 percent of the world's silver supply. Okay, um, we had a big article from Bloomberg about silver, the world's appetite for solar panels. There's more solar panels being made. And the new generation will require more silver. Okay, we've covered this ad nauseum, so we're not going to go any deeper. But I got a very interesting email from one of my viewers. A little inside information, okay? And he said, Ron, you've been talking a lot about demand for silver in the solar panel industry, which is true. He said, but I work for like an industrial services fabrication company, a lot of our clients are solar manufacturing companies. Uh, he said it's not just the silver that goes into the panels, but the companies that provide the paste, the companies that provide the different uh, pieces that go into the solar panels. He's like, you wouldn't believe the amount of silver they use also. He talked about holding tanks that are the size. I have a Honda Odyssey minivan. Many of you know that. We have a Honda Odyssey minivan tanks that are three times he's three times the size of your honda odyssey that are coated with silver he's like you wouldn't believe the demand out there for silver very very interesting we're, we're heading into a a silver <laughs> bonanza very soon Let's go to the comments real quick. Hello, Neil. Thank you, Neil, for your help. Susie, thank you for your help. Dean R., if you guys have a question, all caps. I always love to answer your questions. Any subject you want to talk about. Uh, Lynette Zhang, uh, Steve LaPointe. I will have Lynette Zhang on my show uh, early August. I have an interview scheduled with Miss Lynette Zhang, which I'm very excited about. She's someone who I've had a great deal of respect for. Let me ask you guys. Type five in the comment section if you think highly of Lynette Zhang. She's from ITM Trading. They're a bullion seller, but Lynette's a very outspoken proponent 
of uh, silver and gold. Steve Cicchini, yes. Captain Dino Man, good to see you, my friend. <laughs> he likes her. The FOMO Queen, <laughs> Joe Fowler, yes. Ron McAdams, yes. Uh, Roger, Yao, yes. Yes. Paw Paw Strategy, Rick Kurutz, Paul, yes. So I'm excited. Uh, Lynette is a hottie. Don't get jealous. <laughs> That's for Susie, I think. I'm really hoping Ron's correct about the coming silver bonanza. It's coming right now. Now, let me back up a little bit. Somebody mentioned this earlier. Casey Jones. Yes. Ancient Tom. Uh, she's kind of. Uh, okay, Steve. Yes. John Baxter. Daniel likes Lynette. She's a prepper. She's good, Gonzo says. Um. Somebody mentioned this earlier. <coughs> I apologize for coughing. We need to touch on this, right? Yes, we know it's coming. We also have to realize we don't know when it's coming. Rick Rule says, don't confuse that which is inevitable with that which is imminent. Meaning, don't think that just because you know it's going to happen, it could take time to happen. Okay? Trust me was talking to um, the author of the big uh, the big silver manipulation book a couple weeks ago. He brought up a he joked, he brought up a good point. He's like, yeah. He said, I'm like, that's going to happen. He goes, yeah. He said, but we've been waiting for 15 years. So, yeah, if you don't own it, you don't hold it. I'm going to be making a video about that because there's been some breaking news come out about countries repatriating their goal, bringing it back. There's a big trend in the world. So think about those two big trends. Countries out throughout the world are saying, hey, London, we want our gold back. Hey, New York, we want our gold back. We'd rather hold it ourselves because, and it kind of said this in the article, if they don't hold it, they feel like they don't own it or it could be confiscated or sanctioned or whatever. On top of that, guys, don't forget, the world central banks are still buying gold at a pace like we've never seen before. Let's just feel warm and fuzzy here for a second. You guys want to feel good about the silver price and the gold price? How about these reports that on August 22nd, 23rd, 24th, somewhere in that range, Russian media is reporting that they will be announcing a gold-backed currency that the BRICS nations will use. That doesn't mean overnight we're going to double the gold price, okay? I mean, the news kind of broke. The gold price didn't double yet. But guys, and Buddy Rumble says this, and I agree as well, it sure feels like, and I could be dead wrong, do you, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you this question, because Buddy Rumble says it. I think it's true as well. When it comes to gold, and we use gold as the barometer for silver and platinum and palladium for that matter. But do you think that 1900 range is the new floor for gold? Or do you think that in the next six weeks, 12 weeks, we're going to have 1720 gold? I do think, say yes or no, do you think 1900 is the new floor for gold. I'm curious to hear what you say. Your thoughts matter. You matter, right? Share with us in the comments. Do you think that 1900 is the new floor for gold? And while, no, no, low blood pressure says no. Nickel stacking, yes. Neil says no. Casey Jones, yes. Ron, why is your price prediction all over the place and changes? It doesn't. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, address that. Judith and Dan Davis. Yes. Hey, Ron, I finally caught a live stream. Thank you, Nick Starr. Thank you, my friend. My Vito Tito says yes. Victoria Hunt, yes. Dean R, yes. No. Temporary. I think Ancient Tom's saying it'll dip and then go back up. Old Dirty Bastard Garage. 1850 gold. James Limon, yes. Daniel Cassie, yes. Mike Tooper, yepper. Ron McAdams, no. Paul Beeler, yes. Uh, I think we're at about 63.4% yeses. Captain Dino Man, yes. Jeff Nelson, no. Jerome will hammer it. That's possible. We'll talk about that as well. I got two things to talk about. I got to write this down, okay? William B. Uh, Gary has a question. Oh, man, I got all kinds of stuff we got to talk about. I'm going to come back to that. So we got inflation. We got my crazy price predictions, people are saying. 
right? We got inflation. We're going to talk about all this, gold and silver. And there was one other thing. Oh, boy. Now I forgot one of them. Texas. 90%, uh, two 90% dimes equals a gallon of gas. Uh, yes, from Alan Neal. Explain to us why inflation increases the gold and silver price. Okay, I'll get to that. Guys, okay, inflation. Um, there's a number of different ways to look at this. Why inflation increases the gold and silver price. And you can look at it on a short-term basis or a long-term basis. It's a little easier to look at it, let's say, from a long-term basis. And it's basically because as the money supply increases, think about this. I try to make this simple. Let's say in the whole world there were 100 ounces of gold or 100 ounces of silver or 100 ounces of platinum. That's it, okay? There is a finite limited amount of gold and silver on the planet. And then over here, let's say, what did I say, 100 ounces? Let's back up. 100 ounces total, okay? And for simplicity's sake, let's say there's $100, in the world, okay? Period. That's all the money supply there is for everything. And that's used to buy things, you know, blah, blah, blah. You can't increase. There's only so much gold in the world. It grows by like 1%, half a percent, whatever per year. If the money, the amount of money doubles, triples, quadruples, goes up by 20 times like it has over a long-term basis, like let's say over... Oh, since the Federal Reserve came around, and what was that, 1913, right? Now you have all this money, okay, and that creates inflation because it's just money. There's still a limited amount of goods and services available, right? But there's still only so much gold in the world, right? So all the money, they can increase the, they, they increase the money supply, during the uh, health crisis of 2020 by like some people say 50%. I, I'm, I think it's more accurate about 40, 42%. Okay. There's all that money, right? All that extra money that was printed and there was actually fewer goods and services available. So we saw very high inflation, right? But at the same time, the amount of gold, heck silver, you could argue there's was maybe even a little bit less in the world because it's getting, there was a deficit and it was getting consumed by industry, right? Silver has unique properties in that regard. That's what makes the value over a long period of time since there's only so much silver, only so much gold, period, right? So when you measure it against goods and services, when you measure it then in dollar terms, right, there's all these extra dollars coming up, that makes the price of silver and gold go up. Now, sometimes on a short-term basis, there can be little, oh, uh, the relationship doesn't always appear, like we've kind of gone through over the last two years to be as, uh, as, as direct. But when you spread it out over a long-term basis, there's no other way for it to happen except for inflation in dollar terms to go up in the value of silver and gold, right? What it can buy will either maintain, it'll keep up with inflation. So as measured in dollar terms, the price of gold and silver will go up, right? I mean, talk to one of your relatives who lived 500 years ago, 200 years ago, 80 years ago, right? Ask them. Now, say, boy, do you, do you think, are you, are you more happy that you kept your wealth in paper money or in real hard assets like silver and gold? Let's address something that's a bit of an elephant in the room, okay? Something I get a lot of slack for, and somebody brought it up in the comments, and that's fine. Guys, you do not, I like when you don't agree with me, because then I can hear your perspective and see things a little bit differently, Okay. I get a lot of flack. I'll put out I'll put out videos and I'll say silver, fifty dollars. Sometimes I'll say silver, eighty five dollars. Now sometimes I'll say silver. I've never I don't think I've ever done a six hundred dollar one like some of these guys are doing. Silver, forty five dollars. Silver, twelve dollars. It always depends. I put a lot of thought into it. It depends on the subject matter of the video. But let me say this about silver. I wholeheartedly believe, like I said earlier. We will see triple-digit silver. We will see $100 silver, like our good friend Keith Newmeyer likes to talk about. He coined that term. 
we will see triple digit silver. So if I say 45, it's look, before silver, and I'm just using that as an example, because I think we're going to see $4,000 gold. I think someday we will see, and I can't even imagine how high gold can get. I hear guys talk about 55,000, whatever. Again, when I talk about silver, I'm talking about gold. I'm talking about uh, uh, platinum and clickbait. I'll address that as well. Before you get to $100 silver, you got to get to $45, $65, $85. Before you get to $600 silver, you got to get to $150. You got to get to whatever, whatever number it may be. I always refer to the number in the video. So all thumbnails are clickbait. <laughs> I hate to tell you that. Um, that that's a known fact within, within YouTube, right? Anybody who puts together a thumbnail, you're trying to represent what you're going to talk about in the video. And I always talk about, I always talk about the specific number. Could silver drop by a dollar? That was today's thumbnail. Could silver drop by a dollar this week? Absolutely, it could drop by a dollar because we got a big CPI report and we're going to talk about that now, the big inflation report, right? You know, our Federal Reserve is engaged in this noble fight against inflation, right? Noble, noble fight. Um, what we need to remember is Inflation, are they really fighting it? A lot of people, the smartest guys in the room say, no, the Fed's not really fighting inflation. They can't really fight inflation because the Fed, the Fed can do basic math, believe it or not. And they realize that if they fight inflation and get the inflation number down, number one, they will absolutely destroy the economy. And number two, there's mathematically no possible way that the United States, if they get inflation down could ever pay back what is an unbelievable now mountain of debt and future liabilities on top of that. So the Fed's not really, really fighting inflation. Now the markets, right, the sheeple, they're going to be watching the big CPI report on Wednesday. Let me read this to you. Big news. Eyes are looking ahead to U.S. consumer and producer inflation reports due on Wednesday. Expected to show that price pressures are easing. Now, that would be very good for the price of silver, the price of gold, the price of platinum. Because if it shows that inflation's, you know, it's all a bunch of BS. It's called the BLS, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. And on Wall Street, from what I've been told from my insiders, they refer to the BLS as the Bureau of Lies and Statistics. But... If they show that inflation's coming down, oh, we're getting inflation under control, it's good. That could be really great news for the price of silver and gold because that would indicate that the Fed is quote unquote winning, right? Winning in their smoke and, smoke and mirrors world, their fight on inflation, and, and the market would perceive that as being that the Fed is slowing the economy. Winning the fight on inflation and that the Fed is going to have to pivot sooner. Now, don't forget, guys, this is, from what I understand, a fact. It's, a, it's an absolute fact that any other time in history after the Fed paused, they'd almost always pivoted and started to loosen up on monetary policy within the following 90 days. May have been six months, but nonetheless, watch what the Fed does, not what the Fed says. Because everything they said, hey, thank you for the super chat, Ron. Oh, man, you've been so generous, Ron McAdams, and I still love your first name. Listen to what the Fed don't listen to what the Fed says. Watch what they do. Hey, Ancient Tom, thank you. Man, you guys are awesome. I'm so glad you're all with me here in the basement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the big report on Wednesday, the inflation report, what we could see happen, right, is a big, big move either way. If inflation comes out higher than expected, Right? It's all a bunch of BS anyway, right? It's all a bunch of BS. I think the Fed 
can probably pretty much tell them what number they want, right? Let's show. I could hear Jerome saying, oh, hey, guys, it'd really be, uh, we're in a position now where if we could really, you know, maybe show that we're winning the fight on inflation, that would be kind of the ideal situation based on what we want to do with monetary policy. It's all a bunch of BS, just like the jobs numbers, right? The jobs numbers last week. Oh, yeah, we revised the previous two months. We didn't really create all those jobs. We created 100,000 less back in April. Never mind. Don't worry about that because this month, you know, this is the new number. I mean, how do you, make, how do you mess up like by 30%? Same thing with inflation. There's a, there's a website called Shadow Stats that, that shows, you know, you, get, you guys know this story, right? The way they calculate inflation now is way different than the way they did in the 70s. If they calculated it the same way, we would have had like 13 14% inflation. But nonetheless, the good news for silver and gold investors is, and that's what this article says, um, that, that if the inflation pressures are easing, that could nudge the Federal Reserve, nudge the Federal Reserve into easing up on rate rises later this year. Though it's still seen as likely in July that they're going to raise rates after some cooling in the June jobs report. They, uh, they take all these BS numbers and whatever, right? All right. But maybe our day has come because, look, we've been through two years. Let's remember that. Gold and silver, platinum investors have been through two years of headwinds, right? We're like in our sailboat trying to go that way, and the wind has been blowing at us. Now, I've done a tiny bit of sailing over the years. You can sail into the wind, right? But you go zigzag, back and forth, <coughs> Okay, and that's what silver and gold have been doing. They've been zigzagging back and forth, right? But let's remember, they've held up strong. Thanks again, Ron and Ancient Tom for the super chats. That is much appreciated. But are the winds shifting? And that wind that you've been sailing into, do you hold silver? Do you hold gold? That wind has really been the Federal Reserve. And that wind, right, it doesn't last forever. It doesn't rain forever. The wind doesn't blow in one direction forever. We could soon find ourselves with the wind in our sails, right? Hey, we got 100 thumbs up. Let's do 10 rings. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I also have a question for you guys. Is the audio good today? We had some audio issues yesterday. Uh... Tell me yes if you're if the audio that you're hearing sounds good. I would really appreciate that. And I hold my finger here. You may see that to make sure my little blue light is on. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Susie. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Grant. Got you. Thanks, James Limon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I wanted to say this too. When it comes to inflation, I think I I, I got a feeling. Just a feeling. I'm not going to promise to spray paint my hair any colors or anything like that. But I got a feeling. Yes, thank you, Albin. Thank you, Papa Strategy. Thank you, all you guys. Man, we are the club. We are the basement dwellers. We love silver and gold. And I really, you know, I love the fact that we all get together. And you guys are awesome. We're enthusiasts about precious metals. And thank you again to my good friend, Neil for being here today and helping out. Go check out Neil Han Dynasty, his his uh, YouTube channel, especially if you like cats. I love cats. He's got some hilarious, beautiful cats, um, but he also makes some videos and does some live streams talking about platinum as well. So go check out Neil's channel. Neil's a good guy and a great friend of the Precious Metals community and a great friend of Ron's Basement. Thank you. Same thing with Coin Shop Chris. Um, and Coin Shop Chris, I don't think, can be here today, but we love him, and he's always with us, no matter what. Richard Cooper's in the garage. Well, that counts, as long as it has a concrete floor. You're a cellar dweller. <laughs> you know, when I moved into this house, I owned it. I lived here by myself. And then I got married to Susie, like six months later. And then she became half owner of the house. And she slowly started to take over because I had decorated it like the way I'd wanted it. I slept on an air mattress in the family room. And um, we do have four bedrooms upstairs. Finally, I had to put my foot down. I said, you know what? When it comes to the house, 
only rooms that I get to decorate are ones with concrete floors. The basement and the garage and the screened-in porch. And you know what? She stole the screened-in porch from me, Susie. I know you're here. I love Susie. And she's a wonderful decorator and a wonderful warm home she's created here. Um, oh, here, did I, did I say this already? I think we're in for a big surprise, possibly, on Wednesday with the CPI number. I feel like demand in the economy is slowing down. Now, look, this is no big indicator, but I went to Aldi yesterday to do some grocery shopping or Saturday. I noticed definitely, it seems to me, prices had actually dropped on several of the items. I bought like containers of strawberries. Now, that might just be due to seasonality for $1.15, like cartons of strawberries. My daughters love them. I bought some avocados, uh, 40 cents each, right? Um, I just noticed that I bought I bought a steak. Right, I stopped eating steak. I bought a strip steak, uh, strip steak, and it's USDA um, uh, prime choice select. Yeah, uh, choice grade, right? Which is good, nine ninety nine a pound. Maybe inflation's backing up. Do you? Let me ask you. Do you, yes, yes or no? Do you see? inflation slowing down yes it's slowing down or no it's not slowing down do you feel like in let's say the last six weeks do you sense that inflation has slowed down no 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 okay this is good because i'm delusional we already knew that no no when avocados are cheap in california they cost a dollar wow yes no what sector good question food i think we're focused on here Food and fuel, right? Never. Definitely slowing. No, no, not in the UK, says our friend Richard Cooper. Ronnie Cazares, no, not at the gas pump. No, 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 no. Okay, so you guys don't agree with me, which is fine, <laughs> uh, which is great, actually, because I'm thinking like I'm seeing things slow down. Now, I will say this. I will say this. Think about Americans. Okay, this is interesting. Darn it, did I print this out? I got to share this with you guys. Oh, shoot. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. No, but I wasn't able to print it out. I've got... All right, well, this is... Give me one second. I rarely do this anymore. I'll be back in one second. Wait. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Think about what's going on right now oh, in the economy out there. Okay, this is what I wrote down. Americans have no more savings. Americans, a lot of them have no more room on their credit card debt, right? Now, there was a big article out over the weekend that the people searching on Google to find out how to sell things at pawn shops is at an all-time high. <clears throat> Let me ask you guys. What does that mean for the economy? I want you to think about that. But I want to ask you a question. Are you selling things at pawn shops to survive? Yes, I'm selling things at pawn shops, or no, I'm not. What's up, low blood pressure? Yeah, uh, these are not pink shorts. These are... Sorry, I don't usually show my shorts. These are my favorite shorts. They're, uh, I don't know, they got like... Uh, Anchors. Those are ship anchors. I got them from J.C. Penney, and I bought four pair of them because I liked them so much. Okay, you guys are not good. 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 Ancient Tom, no. Kiko, no. Alan Musk, no. Todd Pauly, no. William B, no. Thomas Troops, no. Victoria Hunt, no. Steve Lapointe, no. Gonzo, no. I see opportunity. No, not selling. Dean R. No, nautical shorts. That's right, Neil. No, no, good. I'm glad you guys aren't selling things at pawn shops to survive. But a lot of Americans are because they don't have any savings. They've maxed out their credit cards or they don't have any credit, right? So they're going to pawn shops. But it gets even worse. You're not going to believe this. This was shocking to me. Let me give me give me ten seconds. So I believe I saved it here. I believe I saved it here. Here it is. Here it is. From Yahoo. Okay? Let me tell you what this says. Workers 
are rating their retirement savings at record rates. I'm like, I didn't even think about that, right? People don't have any savings. They don't have any credit. They're selling crap at pawn shops. And on top of that, what's supposed to be their retirement savings, they're rating it. They're taking money out of their retirement accounts. People like me who are like 53 years old trying to support a family or whatnot, says the share of workers robbing their future selves remains at an all-time high. 37%, 37% of workers have taken a loan, early withdrawal, and or hardship withdrawal from their 401k or similar plan or IRA. According to a survey released Thursday by Transamerica Center for Retirement Studies. Um, those withdrawals underscore why many workers have a pessimistic outlook for their retirement as they grapple with a lack of emergency funds and stretched household budgets that have forced them to tap their nest egg. The practice could become even more prevalent as new rules make it easier to do so. So welcome to America, okay? where we have an economic miracle from our great president, Joe Biden. He is so sharp, so on top of things. He's pulled off this economic miracle. Look at all these jobs he created over the last couple years. Jobs. Jobs out of nowhere. Oh, don't mind that, that when they revised the numbers in the subsequent months, there really wasn't that many jobs. But he's created an economic miracle. Yeah, and our old friend Jerome Powell, things are great in America. What are you complaining about? We got it great here. Everything is awesome. Unless you're a middle class trying to survive and all those jobs. Well, yeah, those jobs numbers are great. You can get yourself a second job. And you know what? If you can't afford to fill your car up with gas or put food on your table, you can get a third job. Yeah, work is good. Just work yourself to death. And then maybe... On Sunday afternoon, your three hours of rest that you were going to get, I don't know, you could go work for Uber or something, drive people around, get a fourth little job. Then, right, all you got to do is work hard. You'll get ahead. Welcome to America, right? Yeah, it's really great here as long as you're in the top 1%. Otherwise, you don't have any savings. You don't have any credit, right? You got to go sell stuff at pawn shops. And when that doesn't work, well, just take money out of your retirement account if you have one. But we're not barreling down the rails headed for a big issue, a big problem, right? No, everything's great here. Let's go to the comments, right? All right. Work, 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 work. Yes, 22 more. Oh, my gosh, we're almost at 200. Oh, you know what I do? Two, two, look, here we go. Yeah. The old nose. When we get to 200 thumbs up, I'll use the nose to ring the bell. Uh, Daniel, Daniel Cassie says, I figure I can retire five years after I die. <laughs> That's right, because after you die, Daniel, your expenses will go way down and you'll be able to save a lot more money. <laughs> That's the funny comment of the day award. Hey, Susie, was there any question that I forgot to answer? Please type it in all caps. We can do it. Yes. I'm 68 year old lady is a is a <laughs> go. Let's go, Brandon. All right. My neighbor is selling her. Okay, Thomas Toops. Um, to the really, she sold two legs and an arm to a medical college. Woo! Biden has spent a fortune visiting the UK today. Cars, helicopters, and planes. Yeah, but. Yeah, you know, with how strong the U.S. economy is, who cares? And plus, we can spend as much as we want in America now because we have no debt limit. We have an unlimited credit card. Dinar says, bye, Silver. All right, guys, thank you for joining me. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for your support. Really, okay, take care of yourself until I see you again here on a live stream. You are important, and you're the most important part of Ron's basement. This is not called Ron Tube. It's called YouTube. You really are important, and you guys make a big, big difference in my life and the lives of everyone here, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I tell you what. Hey, Doc! Wow! 
If silver is one dollar, we can buy it for hopefully in Montana. Yeah, really, right. Yeah, thank you, Doc. Wow. I love the super chats. Be well, says Welco. Thanks, Ron. Thanks for being here. I tell you what, let's wrap up with some fun. I'll tell me where you joined from so we all know we can all get a sense, right? We're around the virtual, we're in the virtual Mr. Rogers neighborhood for silver and gold investors. I'll do my best to read your name if you tell me where you're from. All right, tell me what city you're from, what country. Thanks, James. Thanks again, Doc. Thank you guys for all the super chats. Uh, will you ever clothespin individual an old-fashioned clothesline in the basement? <laughs> That's a funny one. Down the, down the road, ancient Tom. All right, my friend. Uh, Ronnie Casero's in Lub Lubbock, Texas. Roger Yao in Texas. Captain Dino Man's in Ontario. Dean R's all the way in Florida. Albin's in Sweden. Look at that, guys. Sweden. Southern California. Richard Cooper, you're in the UK. I know that, right? Wes... Lachtenbach is in Michigan. Pop Paw Strategies in South Carolina. We got a fancy guy from New York City, Steve LaPointe. Uh, thank you, Doc Ride. Susie's right upstairs, about eight feet above me. Gonzo's in California. DMBT's in JP. Uh, Oklahoma, William B. New Brunswick, Canada. Our friend, Daniel. Hello, Neil. I think Neil's somewhere on the West Coast, right? Thomas Toops is in Mississippi. Kirsten, Kirsten, thank you for the super chat you gave me a couple days ago. I mentioned it in subsequent live streams. I ended before I was able to tell you thank you. Thank you, thank you. Always appreciated, never expected. Thank you, Kirsten Iverson. Susie's in the living room, and I'm in the basement. What the heck? You guys are everywhere. Seneca, Missouri. That's awesome, Mike come see you sometime long live coins no email on your channel i left you a comment okay callie neil's in callie richard cooper's in staffs england fast landy's in laugh out laugh out loud land rbr's in manila uh godspeed to Susie from doc ride Susie's the best dolan springs arizona ellen rose peach andrew mckelvin 24 feet above the rockies texas ron mcadams Waterton, Wisconsin. I love Wisconsin, Timothy Doyle. Love Wisconsin. I've been to Door County. We go to, uh, where are we going to go? I think we're going to be heading to Lake Geneva pretty soon. Uh, possibly. Anyway, Sioux Falls, South Carolina. Mr. Beaner Stuff. Timothy Doyle's the guy in Wisconsin. Mark Cruels in Rock Rapids, Iowa. Ricky Crash, Nevada. Chicago. Mark Carroll. The English flag is blocked, white background, red cross, Richard Cooper. Interesting. California, Tampa. Ron, five more nose bell rings for 150 likes. Okay, Susie. Here, guys. I may, but can't see the bell today. Hold on here. There's the old uni. There's the bell. Hold on, guys. All right, there's the bell. This came from a great viewer. It's a an eyeglass holder. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Tampa, Florida, the Netherlands. All right, let's just stop and realize we are in all over the world. We're friends. You are not alone. You know you're always welcome here in Ron's basement. I appreciate you being here. I'll see you soon. Thanks, Neil, for your help today. Neil Han Dynasty. Guys, go check out his channel as well.